Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video, I wanted to revisit uh, Composite Mold, particularly um, their Power Mold product. Uh, now, if you follow the channel, you would have seen I put up a video um, a few weeks back about some experiments that I had done with the Composite Mold and some of the difficulties that I had with it. Uh, well, it turns out Composite Mold took a look at my video and uh, actually um, I commented on one of their videos first actually and then they found my video and uh, we kind of had a little bit of an exchange through um, YouTube comments about um, tips and ideas and then I asked them actually to if it would be helpful if they could put up a video uh, on how they control bubbles in the pore and because that was the main problem if you didn't see the previous video is bubbles um, attach basically to the master so that when you demold it you have an irregular surface that you can't really cast into very well. They, um, so they did, they posted a video on uh, bubble control and what I decided to do was to try to go uh, through that video and follow each of their steps very carefully. One of the things they mentioned was that I might be overheating the power mold, uh, which is quite likely actually, as in my mind, I wanted as thin a product as possible, but I may be um, overheating it, causing some boiling actually within the compound, which would of course introduce bubbles into it. So um, what I uh, did was I wanted to cast something uh, relatively small with um, quite a bit of detail in it. Now I play Dystopian Wars also, and uh, I don't talk about Dystopian Wars too much on the channel, just because it doesn't really come up. But um, I recently obtained one of the new flyers for the Blazing Sun, um, and this is, um, you know, a, the kind of thing I'd like to be able to reproduce. Um, you know, you, you buy them in a pack of two, it'd be awesome to have three. I only really want to cast one rather than buy another pair for myself. Uh, but also kind of emulates the level of detail I might create in a, in a master uh, for terrain work whereby I only want to cast a couple of them. So this is, you know, a challenging piece of a lot of very small details in it. Um, but I have cast some other uh, Dystopian Wars pieces for terrain, etc., uh, for my own use that um, have a simil et cetera, have some similar levels of detail uh, with using silicone rubbers and casting resins and have gotten excellent results. So I can use that as my foundation to kind of compare it to the composite mold for this kind of a piece. So what I did is I shot a series of segments, I'm going to show you in just a second, where I go through all of the processes, try to explain each one, and uh, the camera cut out uh, a couple of the segments because the battery was low and I, I was having trouble charging the battery, it has to do with the bloggy, you know, whatever, don't worry about that. Uh, but I think there's enough footage to uh, give you a sense of all of the steps that I went through and some of the results, and we'll review those results at the end of this video. So here is my uh, mold box. Um, now, Composite Mold did say that if I was melting the hot glue, uh, that I was probably uh, overheating the Composite Mold. So I'm going to give it another try with hot glue. Um, and the whole box is simple. There's a sheet of um, plexiglass, and then um, what I've done is cut strips of plexiglass and then hot glued them into a box. The uh, model is embedded in the uh, soft modeling clay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Sharpie, and I'm going to create... Um, a couple keyholes so that a two-part mold will be keyed together uh, properly. Let's do that. And um, for the model itself, I just pressed it in. I'm not, uh, you know, worried about whether it's exactly halfway embedded or not. I just want a good, a good edge seal so that the composite mold doesn't get underneath it. This is standard molding procedure for whether you're using silicones or or any kind of modeling material. The uh, steps in the video um, indicate using a, a mold release. I'm using a Man Ease Release 200. This is a general sort of all-purpose um, mold release. You can use this with silicone rubbers and urethanes. Um, this is a... Um, I'm looking to see... Um, okay, it does not say um, what its components are. I thought it was a um, I thought it was a wax based uh, it may not be but in any case um, indications were to give a light coating a light coating so let's see if I can videotape this not get mold release on my hand on my camera I mean and that's that's usually about how much mold release I hit um, when I'm casting anything so next step will be the bubble buster 
So for um, a bubble buster substitute, they say it's a PVA water mixture. So this is a PVA glue and water. This is a, a Home Depot spray bottle. And um, it's a fairly dilute um, PVA glue solution. And so um, I'm going to spray it, let it dry, and I may give it um, a very light second coat. I'm going to try to be as, as, uh, as light in the coating as possible and as even. Oh. Hmm. Well... All right, I don't know if we can see this. Now this is one of the things that I notice with um, PVA is that it tends to bead up. You know what I'm gonna do actually? Hold on here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna grab um, a very soft bis bristled brush. Bristled, bristled. And uh, I'm just gonna actually, I'm gonna give the model a little wiping over here. Let's see if we can get um, a more even coating. And maybe I'll make this my only uh, coat on this. Let's get rid of some of these puddles, spread them out a little bit. Wipe off that brush a little bit there. And hopefully the uh, milky color um, that you can see in the video, and this is for composite mold as well. I'm going to have them, you know, take a look at it, depending on how my results are. Um, well, good or bad, I'll have them take a look at it. Um, but, um, you know, you get a sense of the uh, concentration of the PVA glue and water. Um, that may be um, too much, too little, that sort of idea. All right. Well, I think I have brushed that into all of the texture. And now we're going to um, give that um, some air drying time. So um, the bubble buster, my, my version, <laughs> has uh, dried now. And I've been heating the composite mold uh, very slowly in the microwave for several hours today, just keeping it warm so that the bubbles would rise to the top. Uh, there are still a few, you know, small bubbles in the surface, um, but overall, uh, the side, you know, looks, let's see if I can tip it a little bit there. Well, I can't tip it too much, uh, but, it, you know, most of the bubbles seem to have uh, disappeared. Now, Composite Mold recommended that I uh, not overheat it. Um, and that, you know, something uh, according to, you know, like a honey type consistency. Now, I noticed that the top of this was skimming a little bit, skinning, I should say. So what I'm doing is I'm moving that out of the way and uh, I'm going to go down deep here and take a little bit of this and drizzle it onto the model. Now they show in uh, their video, you know, to brush it on into areas where there are undercuts. Uh, now this model actually is relatively free of undercuts but I'm going to go with that process in any case to try to see if I can get as good an attachment to the master as I can. Now one of the things that they recommend but did not show in the video, well I shouldn't say recommend, but mention you can also do, is to then heat this layer with a heat gun to break bubbles in its surface before pouring the rest of the composite mold. So I'm going to try that. Now, actually, um, when I was trying to dry the PVA and water solution, I uh, actually started to release the uh, hot glue on the sides. Even though the hot glue had not gone to strictly to a melted state, um, it was... Uh, uh, starting to detach from the plastic, uh, the, um, what is that? Not plastic card, uh, plexiglass. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to, we're going to see if I can keep this together. And, uh, I'm putting on, uh, the layer here. I'm going to go down deep here into the composite mold where hopefully it's a little more bubble free. And once I get this coated, oh, I should probably turn my hat around so I don't get a brim in the shot here. I can't see the camera's view while I'm doing this, so hopefully this will work out all right for the viewers. We're going to spread that out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get a very, very thin layer. Now it's already starting to set up. The model itself is absorbing some of the heat, obviously. Um, so let's, let's try and warm that a little bit.
And I guess I'm going to be looking to see... Actually, and let's do this. Let's, uh, whoops. Let's warm it up on my, uh, brush as well. Alright, now this is the, um, spot where the post for the model will, uh, Insert. I don't mind drilling that out. That's a pretty small concern. Let's get this away from it. Let's get a little bit of a thinner layer on it. We really just want a super thin layer on the outside. At least that's my personal goal here. So I'm trying to pull this away from the model. So that I have just a skin on it. Now, because it's translucent, you know, I can try and see if I've got any air bubbles in there. And uh, I do, I can see a couple entrapped in some of these very tight corners, which, you know, is not necessarily unexpected, as the model does have some small details to fill. Itch my nose here. Um, so let's see here. Keep trying to pull out of that. Actually, I have to say, I kind of like the uh, hot glue, hot heat gun uh, brush combo. I feel like I get um, a much better control over the, the initial coat. So this might be, you know, a really good tip. Now, for this model, I'm only going to be looking for a single cast from it. So, you know, bubbles that are against the... Oh, right here. Bubbles that are against the surface of my thin coat, you know, might break after multiple casts. But I'm really only looking for one cast. If I can get one good cast, I'm going to count that as a victory, as I only want one of these models. And, uh, but of course, well, we can debate that later. Let's see how this comes out before I talk about its uses. I don't know if that's going to come out. Let's see. make it look easier in the video, I think, than uh, it feels here. Let's see if that comes out of that spot. I can always drill that back out. Well, alright, I'm going to keep trying. I can see bubbles in the rotors here. There's just no, there's no doubt there's bubbles in that. see some bubbles in the rotors here as well. I don't know. I see bubbles. I see quite a few. I guess the idea... Alright, I'm just going to keep pulling it away. I'm going to get this hot down away from us so much. Let's just... Speed up this brush a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. Got a little too hot there. Sorry about that. Alright. Um, I don't, 
I don't know if this is showing in the camera. Uh, I think it is. The heat gun I have about, oh, I don't know, about eight inches away on low. And uh, I'm just gonna, oh boy, I don't know. I'm gonna brush out a lot of this. Because I can see bubbles in there. Let's take it down to a nice thin coat. I don't think I'm going to be able to free all the bubbles from the surface of this. I can still see bubbles in all of almost every one of these rotor turns here. And as this is refilling. All right, but let's let's give it a let's give it a, the benefit of the doubt. Maybe those aren't actually on the surface, right? Because I've brushed, maybe I've made contact with the surface. All right. And we will pour the composite mold in the far Okay, not sure why the camera turned off there. Um, but I've poured the composite mold and I'm vibrating it. Uh, this is my uh, vibrating table that I use when I uh, used to cast plaster this way. I've got sponges underneath. All right. And I've given it quite a bit of wrapping. Now, looking through it, I see a lot of bubbles that look like they're on the surface, but may not actually be. So we will see once this cools down. So here's the um, mold. I've uh, basically, um, there's the finish. I've uh, taken it off the base and uh, removed the clay. I still have a little cleanup to do. Um, but a couple interesting things. Um, there are a couple bubbles in this surface. There's one there, and one there, and there. But for the most part, and here's one that looks like it uh, might be just under the surface, but most of the area is um, bubble-free. Um, there is a void here at the nose, and uh, I noticed... Uh, oh, maybe that was it. I thought I saw another one. Um, one thing that I took as a positive sign was um, some of the bleeding that came in underneath the model. So even though it had a relatively tight fit, it did flow underneath it. So I'll take that as a good sign for picking up detail. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this edge up and uh, carefully clean that edge up. I'm going to fill... Mm, I don't know what to do with that. I guess I'm going to leave that and see if the um, see if the composite mold fills into that. And I got to check the video again to see about doing a two-part mold um, whether they recommend chilling the bottom half before pouring the top half. Uh, so I'm going to clean this up, start uh, warming up the composite mold for the second pour, and uh, we'll see um, how that goes. So I've tried heating the composite mold in the oven, actually, um, and uh, to uh, the oven set at 140. Um, it said that the maximum temperature to heat this in uh, one of the comments was 140 to 150 for power mold. So I figured that'd be safe. I warmed it up in the microwave first, 
And then I, uh, all right, we're gonna we're gonna keep this hot here, but I got to be careful because I don't want to melt the surrounding composite mold. So that's a little bit of a trick. So we're just gonna try and keep it warm and see if I can spread a super thin coat. I know, there's a lot of little detail right in there. And the last time I did this, I uh, put a little too much on. So my goal here is to try to work it on the, map, the model and not on the actual composite mold union because of course if I melt this too hot, it might stick to the, I might melt the uh, substrate and the two parts I assume would fuse. So. softening the, uh, the underlying material, so i got to let that cool. Alright. Well, hopefully I didn't just ruin it. This is not recommended technique. I don't know. I'm always a fidgeter. Always got to play a little more with something, I guess. So I'm going to try and just heat this last blobule, sort of, just to get it to flow a little bit better. And then I'm going to try to just finish up this side. see bubbles in those rotors though. I'll be shocked if this comes out. I can see a big bubble against the surface right here.
it's hard to see. We'll see. Well, I just shot the demolding of this, <laughs> but I forgot to hit record on the uh, camera. So, in any case, um, we'll take a look at it. So, you, the first layer was the thicker layer. Uh, this is the uh, second layer that I poured. Had a little more trouble with the second layer than I did with the first. Um, and basically, I was able to demold the two halves. I was concerned about the way I was trying to heat the composite mold to push it into the details. Um, and I was able to uh, demold it. Now, the second side, um, which I expected would be more likely to have problems, you know, has some pretty big problems, actually. Um, really big bubbles in, uh, you know, some of these areas. Actually, some really large ones. There are bubbles in all the rotor uh, notches. Uh, you can see them in, in just about, I think, everyone except maybe one or two per rotor. Um, and some really large bubbles in some key areas um, so this is really not going to be a usable mold um, I had thought about you know if there were a few bubbles I would just clean it up uh, but um, there's some you know some real honkers and there's a lot of them um, so but I thought maybe it's just because the second side I struggled with it I felt like the first side whoops I'm dropping stuff I felt like the first side I got a much better application and taking a look at it, the answer is yes, I got a better application, but it's still um, not usable by my standards. So you can see in the rotors, they still have the bubbles, albeit smaller ones. Um, but still, as I said, I just could not get those bubbles out. Um, you can see the big bubble up against the gun there. Um, several actually in the gun itself, in the main turret at the back of some of those details. And, uh, you know, some larger ones in the back here. And one good thing was I was able to pull out the plug. This is where the uh, flight stand goes into the model. And that actually formed a nice plug, um, which actually looks great. So, you know, go figure. Here we go again. Something worked, and it's like, how come that worked and other spots didn't? Uh, but around the windows of the, it's not really windows, but they might as well be. These really tiny windows on the... This is actually some kind of, uh, it's a force field uh, d displacement thing. Um, in any case, um, holes and bubbles in all of those little windows. That doesn't entirely surprise me, as I knew that was going to be one of the most difficult areas to get it into, because the detail is so small. Um, but uh, definitely more cleanup than I would be willing to invest, and some areas are going to have some really, really major cleanup that's going to be hard with the kind of detail that the model has. So overall I would say this is um, not successful and perhaps my thought is you know maybe a model like this has too much detail for composite mold and so you know maybe it's just not the best application for the material but this is the kind of project I would want to be doing it with. Um, you know small detailed parts that I'd only want to make one or two casts of and uh, this is just really not going to be uh, usable. So you can see um, that I am still having trouble with the composite mold. Uh, and I was not able to get a good cast despite using several of the techniques that they suggest, um, such as slow heating. Um, I had this in, you know, as a quick summary, and I can't remember everything that was in the uh, other segments. You know, I had this in the microwave for almost the entire day very methodically heating it up, letting it sit, heating it a little more, let it sit to drive all the bubbles out. And I did get all of the bubbles out of the compound before I poured for the most part. Um, I also tried brushing it in. I tried using their uh, PVA water down, you know, as a bubbles you know, buster kind of idea. Um, heat gun to try to keep the liquid on the surface while I was brushing it. Uh, and I was not able to get any real consistency with its application um, over the master. So, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to give composite mold a thumbs down at this point, um, and I'm gonna direct composite mold to the video, this one, and uh, have them take a look at it. And maybe I'm missing something. Maybe this part is too intricate for them the compound to be used successfully with. Um, if you look at many of their videos, uh, their videos often involve um, objects that don't have a lot of very tight detail on them. Although the bubble buster video uh, that they put up did have, you know, this this chipped end of a piece of wood, which does have quite a bit of detail in it, and they seem to get good results with it. So, you know, it could be me. Um, I'm not sure, but we'll run it by them and see. And if I can get any more uh, tips or follow up from them. Um, I'll come back with another video if I can successfully use composite mold to give you an update on that. So, uh, just another uh, product update. Um, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave questions and comments down below, and I will be back immediately as I have several videos to shoot uh, later, later today. Blah, having trouble speaking. Thanks.